Well, hello everyone, this is Jeff with another unboxing video. I come back a uh, couple weeks ago from my trip to China. And a couple of the models that aircraft are flew on are available. Today I'm very excited to bring this particular model uh, to the forefront because I've been wanting to fly on the 777-300ER from United Airlines for quite a while. I've flown on the 200ER and uh, this is just one that I've always wanted to pick up. So I'm glad that uh, I finally was able to fly on it or one of the 777s the 300 ERs because they're a new addition to their fleet. So this is a uh, model from Easy Toys at uh, easytoys.com and I bought a few models from them before and they've always done a really nice job with their shipping and getting the items to me. Um, it's still available from some retailers. This model was less than 120 bucks so if you want to get it I would suggest you get on it pretty soon because this eventually will sell out and become a hard to find item. This is G2UAL643, United Airlines. Uh, the aircraft itself, the registration on this one here is N2331U, and uh, that is not the uh, same aircraft that I flew on, um, but this was the uh, first 777-300ER delivered to United and called the New Spirit of United. And its first flight was on November 11th, 2016 delivered on December 21st, 2016. So just a couple of two and a half years old. And uh, it was uh, one different uh, version that I flew on from uh, Narita to Newark, 11 hour flight, 39 minutes, 6,955 miles. So uh, let's have a look and check it out. This is uh, because the 300 ER from Gemini has the, is the, has the flip top box now. So um, in the lid, we have uh, some nice information here about the up, bringing up of the aircraft and such. So um, it's nice that they've included that information as well. I'll take a picture of that and put it into the end of the video somewhere so you can uh, read it at your own leisure. But it's nice to see the uh, clear box it does kind of give it a little bit of extra interest. I don't keep any of my models in the boxes. I display all of them. So. It's uh, cool to have it, but it's not something I'd necessarily utilize. So one thing about the flip top box, it is nice, but without the protective layer that you see here, that Gemini uses. Some of the Phoenix models don't have that protective layer, so the plastic can rest right on top of the model, which isn't a good thing. It hasn't proven to be a good thing in the cases where I've got those, so just be aware that maybe Phoenix has readjusted their box design, but uh, I generally haven't been purchasing them for, for that very reason. So this has the wooden stand with the blue protective coating on it. We have the gear, which is removable, the wing gear, and then the nose gear. Then we have uh, some pieces that go into their place if you want to do the in-flight configuration. I always uh, have mine either on the stand or uh, sitting on their wheels, so I really never use those. They never come out of the package. So the 300 ER is just uh, really one of my favorite uh, aircraft types. Just a really amazing aircraft in terms of its capabilities and the role that it plays. 
just a really amazing aircraft. And Jim and I have done a really nice job with this one again. We've got it on the stand and it looks nice and straight on there. Pretty sweet aircraft. So let's go ahead and put the uh, gear on here. And that has the partial registration, the fleet number for United Airlines on it. And these do tilt. Yes, these uh, are the tilting gears. So Gemini has uh, on the 300 ER. If you see on the leading edge here, they have the shock. You can see the piston actually depressing there, which is pretty cool. Allows you to get that very interesting triple seven kind of landing configuration it doesn't have enough tilt to make it truly correct because it would be a bit more tipped than this uh, but this makes a good sort of uh, uh, on the ground configuration and the nose gear here has the jewel taxi and landing lights in it so four really nice Still don't have the jewel lights here in the for the landing lights in the wing, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. So let's have a look here. We've got the nose of the aircraft, the radome cover. We have the pitot tubes angle of attack sensor, other speed sensors and such, illumination light. We've got a nice job with the windshield wipers and our Star Alliance. Of course United was a founding member of Star Alliance. Currently it has 28 members. We have the L1 door and that beautiful gold cheat line. The capital uh, letters on the United. Of course, many of you may know this livery was kind of somewhat borrowed from Continental when United Airlines merged with them. Uh, started talks to do that in 2010, finally completed in 2013. So that's where most of the United livery has come from, except for this actual titling L2 door and we have our static ports here and the pressure release valve the nice ETOPS markings there on the nose gear door Triple Seven, one of my favorite aircraft, uh, especially the 300ER, because it is of such a great size. No over the wing walkway, which I'll have to see on pictures. But uh, usually uh, these models are extremely accurate, and they don't miss details like that. So it may be that the 300ER has a different style of uh, exit raft area where it comes out and then comes down over the wing. We have wing illumination lights. The L4 door. 
United, of course, is a flag carrier of the United States, so we do have the flag there. The registration N2331U. And partial registration for the company. The L5 door. And one thing about the United livery is that gold is just very nice to look at it has a real sort of reflective quality that exists on the real aircraft but it's nice to see it here on the model too the gold and the blue just really work well together in my opinion we have the markings for the horizontal stabilizer this adjusts during flight so that uh, it account for uh, changes in the center of gravity so it's something that's constantly or gradually being adjusted 777 very iconic with the APU the auxiliary power unit exhaust hole um, it does have this on the side you can always tell a 777 because it has this flat sort of blade where the end of the aircraft is the very aft part then we have a strobe light on top and a position light as well. But you can pretty much pick out a 777 based upon that. Of course, we've just had the 777X do its first flight uh, a couple weeks ago or last weekend. So that's uh, ongoing in its efforts to create a cleaner environment for the 777. So part of the lure of the 777 these are these engines, the triple, the G90s, the 115B1B uh, that the 777 employs in most cases. The uh, 115B has a 128 inch diameter fan. Uh, that is bigger than the fuselage of a 737. So this engine is over 10 feet, the fan alone. So. The actual engine is almost 14 feet in diameter with the cowling. But uh, we have nice work on the markings here for the engine. Thrust, re thrust reversers, the engine nacelle, really nicely done. The, the, this engine does use an engine strake. This is a lift device so you'll often see air spinning up up and over the wing generating lift this engine weighs over almost 20 tons so uh, you want to make sure you've got uh, something to kind of counteract its own weight wingspan on this aircraft 212 feet and that's including this raked wing tip here We have our red navigation light at the tip of the wing. This will always be showing you red when the aircraft is approaching you. If the aircraft is moving away from you, then you will see white lights that are positioned on the tail part of the wing, the very aft part of the wing, of the wing tip. Then we have our wing with our inboard spoilers, flaps. This is the flapper on. That's a control device is extremely active during flight. This is what does most of the work of creating roll for the aircraft. Outboard flaps and spoilers. Fuel dump nozzle, aileron. And that raked wingtip. The raked wingtip is used on the 300ER and the 200LR. It's a uh, device to buffet the uh, or spoil the wingtip drag air, which can cause greater fuel burn. So they've created that extra wingtip device to compensate for it. Here we see the underside of the fuel nozzle, dump nozzle, the flap track fairings. Impressive looking bogey there. That 
beautiful G90 engine. Very characteristic sound. Let's have a look at the other wing here. And of course on this side we have the green navigation light. And then on the tip of the wing tip there would be a white strobe light. And then on the other side of course we have our spoilers, flapper on, spoilers, flaps, aileron. Very graceful aircraft, the 777, especially the 300, because it's identified by these the fact it has these five doors, and uh, versus four that the 200 series has. It's that much longer, 242 feet in length. I think the LR is uh, 212 feet. We have the Star Alliance logo again on the right side of the aircraft. The R1 door. R2 door. It's a little bit of packing, I think. There we go. We see the static ports again and our LD3 loading unit door. Static ports engine nacelle illumination light the R3 door more illumination lights over the wing then we have the R4 door the US flag the registration N233 1U. Partial registration to the left of the door there. Then underside here we have our LD3 loading unit door again. And the bulk bin door and then these little circles you see either side of the door are actually illumination lights. So this is a very active area uh, after, before takeoff and after landing as all of the items come out of there and head to the baggage claim so you can get your bags. It's quite a process involved. Horizontal stabilizer. This box is the intake for the auxiliary power unit so you can always tell when it's running because there will be a little flap pointed upward. Again that beautiful gold on the tail going with the blue. It's a great contrast. Of course they got the new livery now but uh, it still has some features of the globe the globe is still there it's a bit bigger and then they've added some more blue to it horizontal stabilizer with the tail illumination lights and our elevator nice work with the leading edge there so we have a VHF antenna here, emergency locator transmitter antenna, then this is a standard uh, satellite antenna that the aircraft uses. On Airbus uh, the aircraft they're in the forward part of the aircraft on Boeing they're towards the aft on at least the wide bodies. But that's not 3D it's just smooth. ADF antennas auto direction finder Another VHF antenna. It's your internet GoGo -Go in flight Wi Fi on United uses. Anti collision beacon. And then we'll have some traffic collision avoidance system antennas, air traffic control antennas. Then they don't, they're not shown, but if you look on real pictures of the aircraft, you'll see it has lots of, air, lots of antennas on the top and the bottom. Look at the underbelly here. Got the nose gear there, the nose gear door, 
the escape hatch there, which is this small door here, the 777-300ER. So this will be for the ground crew. They'll want to know what aircraft's coming in so they know where to stop the aircraft, although a lot of places have an automated system that the pilots simply look forward and it, it tells them uh, when to stop. So pressure release valve again. marking here this is a drain here intakes for the AC packs and then there's a pipe that comes and supplies these squares here which I think must be an AC exhaust we have the hole for the stand the jewel uh, marker light there the 3d effect on the landing gear, gear doors is good it has a nice groove there this red box is the rat the ram air turbine which drops out if the aircraft loses power and it's used to basically power the avionics and control so that the pilots can get to the ground then we have another VHF antenna and this is a another drain then this little square here, this black square is the aft pressure release valve. Then we have the circling of the gold cheat line coming underneath, and then the auxiliary power unit housing doors. Very nice. Yeah, the 777 is just a real workhorse and is just a constant, uh, constantly used asset. These aircraft land just briefly and are serviced in a couple of hours and turned back around. So I flew from Narita to Newark, um, and that was a couple weeks ago. So that was a, a very interesting trip and my first time to fly on the 777-300ER from United Airlines at least. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, United Airlines, of course, third world's third largest airline, fleet size of 782 aircraft, 95 triple sevens. That is a huge fleet of triple sevens. They have 21 of the 300 ERs, and they're also the launch customer of the triple seven. And N2331U was the first triple seven delivered and as I mentioned before called the New Spirit of United. This is not marked with that title uh, so I'm sure they repainted it. United has eight hubs including Newark which is where I flew into. Newark's the third largest of their hubs and acquired as a result of their continental merger. Their headquarters is in the Willis Tower in Chicago and they are, have 356 destinations worldwide in 48 countries. Um, the founder uh, founded was originally by Walter Varney in 1926 in Boise, Idaho as Varney Airlines and that was a precursor to United. So Continental Airlines seceded Sp Speed Airlines uh, which Varney had also founded. It became Varney Speed Lines in 1934. V uh, Varney Airlines basically flew mail. That was their essential, uh, essential contract from 1926. Then later on William Boeing, who we know of Boeing fame, founded Boeing Air Transport in 1927 to operate mail routes in conjunction with the Postal Service. Uh, Boeing Air Transport merged with Pratt & Whitney to form United Aircraft and Transport Corporation, UATC, which bought up a number of smaller airlines. And then later on March 28, 1931, formed United Airlines. They merged with, merged with Capital Airlines on June 1, 1961 to become the second largest airline after Aeroflot. So essentially Boeing Air Transport merged with Varney Airlines and that was the original founding of the United Airlines. So they began operating jets in 1961 and then 70, 747s in 1970 and then a few years after that the DC-10 and they were one of the main operators of that. They didn't get any overseas destinations until 1983 but as uh, Pan Am started to go out of business in 1986, they got a number of international routes and a whole bunch of their aircraft. 
which really enabled them to become a, a world-class airline. So on May 2nd, 2010, United and Continental Airlines agreed to combine operations, became reality on March 31st, 2013. The tale is the Continental Globe in gold, which was originally created for Continental Airlines by the Lippincott Company, and now is used with the gold cheat line along the fuselage. So let's have a look at these engines and see if we can get them to spin. It's a Gemini, so usually the Gemini jets uh, do spin very well, unless they get stuck like that sometimes. And as you can see, it spins pretty good until it sticks. But there we go. Looks good. Nice. And let's look at the other side. So as you can see, that side, the port side number one engine works fantastically. I'm sure that this aircraft, if it had to use its E-tops, would be fine with the number one engine. So it looks good on the stand, it's a nice tidy model, The it's going to look great on the shelf, I got one shelf just for the 777's, so uh, it's going to look really nice there. So this aircraft has a total of 350 seats. We have the uh, C Polaris class uh, business, which is the R1 to the R3, so a good chunk of the aircraft is devoted simply to that one class. Then we have a premium economy section for about six rows on the outside of the aircraft. The middle four seats on the 777, uh, the premium economy only goes for three rows, or four rows, excuse me, So or three rows. And then we have economy seats, 266 of those from after premium economy all the way to the tail end of the aircraft. So a good measure of the aircraft taken over by the business class, which is, of course, a main money maker for most of the aircraft. So length on this aircraft, 242 feet, 4 inches. Wingspan, 212 feet. Height, 60 feet, 8 inches. Maximum takeoff weight, 775,000 pounds. Uh, it's just 360 tons almost. Max fuel weight, 320,000 pounds. Range, 7,370 nautical miles. Unit cost on this three hundred sixty-one million. Uh, when I did get back from my trip, I w or on the trip, I was able to get my logbook signed on the aircraft that I flew on, which was N two one three six U, and I went up into the cockpit and got my picture taken and met the captain. So that was really nice and um, made the trip that extra extra special bit. So, so this model is still available. Uh, I suggest if you want to get it. It's time to make a move on it soon because, as I said earlier, it will sell out and it will be a hard-to-find model. Uh, certain certain 777s and certain liveries are going to be uh, sought after. And because United Airlines have just changed their livery, then the new one, the new livery is going to become more, uh, more available. So the availability of this one has become less. So get right on it. So. All right, well, this is another cool model to the, add to the collection. Let me know if you got this one. It's been out for uh, some time now, so I, I'm sure it's going to sell out at, at some point, and uh, it's a great model to have. Again, if you like this video, give me a like or subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.